In this video, I'm going to show you how you can track time for the different stages of a job and your, the, the final is what you're going to get for the total time for each job. So for example, um, we have Susan here and she has taken this order on um, the 8th of February and Robert has designed complete. So now the next thing it has to do is it needs to be sent to the shop. And so we're going to download and the two foremen are going to have to either uh, account for it. So, so Joe is going to account for it and it puts in the time. And so then it keeps, keeps a total of the, the time in. Now, um, it's not going to make much difference because I'm going to complete this thing in, in like a few seconds, but I'm just, I'm just calculating in days and hours. And so then I say that, uh, Joe tell, says that this is complete now and we have the total hours. Okay, so whenever we change one of these columns um, for the people that are responsible for it, it puts in a time and then it's totaling our time at the end here. So Paul's taken this job on um, the 6th of February. And so now design complete, uh, Brenda's completed this job. And so it's put in the time there. And we have a running total of five, five days and zero hours. And so it's going to complete every time we put in, when it's sent to shop, it's going to put in the name and what time it's gone to the shop. And when he completes it, it's going to put in the, uh, the name and when that's been completed. This way we can track how long these jobs are taking. Now, when we look at this, we can see that um, it was, was received on the 6th and um, the job wasn't, the design of it wasn't completed until till the 11th. So we, it's a red flag there. Maybe this is a long time, I'm not sure, but you would soon be able to see. So let's see how I've done this. So the first thing I've done is I've done on the worksheet. I've done on, I've done on the wor worksheet by change of value. And I've said, if, if anything changes in, in B, then we're going to call the program called order, order T. And if anything changes in D, it's going to be design C, which is design complete. And then the same thing, if anything is changed in the F column, then it's going to be shop start. And if anything, changes in the H column, then it's going to be job complete. Okay, so now let's go look at these little programs that I've done. So order, um, order taken is the active cell is selected, active cell um, offset, active cell value, active cell offset, Zero, 01. So I've moved over one and I'm putting in the date and the time. And this is the format for the date and the time. And it automatically selects the next one, assuming that you're going to be putting the next something in there. And that's exactly how it goes for each of them. If the active cell, we're just um, selecting the next one. But the, on these other ones, row number is the active cell row. So it, it knows which row number we're on. And then for everything but the first one, what we're doing is we're calling total hours and then sending it the row number and the same thing, shop start row number and job to, job complete and row number. So let's look at these programs. So total hours equals the time in is uh, row number in the third column. So that'd be the C column and um, total hours would be the five. So this is called after we put in the second time and date. And then the same thing with all of these, we're doing the uh, time diff total differences in days and between time in and time out, um, total hours, difference in hours between the time in and time out. And then it's putting it in, uh, in, the, in the last, uh, in the 10th column of the row that we're on saying the number of days and the number of hours. And this repeats for all of them. So that's how you can create 
a time tracker for your jobs that are ongoing in your operation. I will, of course, include all the code in the description of my video. Please subscribe.